Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get the blue loop fabric cooked up. Yep, I'm working on getting it unrolled right this minute. Except there's a dog nose in the way, which is not healthy. <laughs> of course. Okay, Rufus, you need to move. He's being helpful. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, there's only one trouble. The camera's in the way. Has that been brushed off already? Yes. How come? Yeah, I know. I brushed this all off last okay. night. I couldn't remember. It's been a while. <laughs> okay. Now, what we're about to do is we're going to flip the screen so we can see. Ta-da! And we're going to be putting adhesive onto some loop fabric and then onto this piece of wood. This is a sandwich of 10th inch plywood, expanded polystyrene, and another piece of 10th inch plywood. The reason why we're doing this is we're replacing the first ever display boards that we made for Irene's shop. They weigh about 40 pounds a piece, right. and that's fine, but it always happens that we're trying to put those up at the very end of the event as the last things that come into the truck. And by the end of six or seven hours of packing up, you get pretty tired. So we're getting rid of those heavy ones and we're building some lightweight. These will weigh about uh, f maybe 15 to 17 pounds tops. Right, and something about lifting 40 pounds over your head at the end of an event is just like, yeah, no, not so much fun. You want to grab the yeah. loop, uh, the uh, loop now fabric? when he says loop fabric, this fabric is uh, designed to work with the brand name Velcro. It's made by uh, a couple of different companies, but the basic idea is the colored side, and these comes in all different colors. Uh, the colored side will uh, work with any kind of loop fabric, whether it's name brand or not. But we buy the name brand because we're looking for specific characteristics and we learned this the hard way uh, and that is that very the normal velcro that you buy at the store is probably good to about a hundred and maybe 120 degrees tops. maybe 120 degrees tops actually the industrial stuff that you buy at the store is good to 120 degrees the velcro we're switching to is good to how much do you have on that end I have about six inches. Okay, let's move it. Well, we don't need to do that yet. Uh, the uh, industrial stuff that we have that we've just replaced on all our hangers is good to 140 degrees. Now, we could get to 200 degrees, but it takes a really special type of, of uh, hook tape, and it's a much larger hook. The hooks that, that Irene's tried seem to work fine with this loop fabric. Right, and the reason, I mean, it seems like a ridiculous temperature, but you think about how hot a surface gets when it's in the sun. Just like if you leave your iPhone or something like out on a table and it's in the sun when you're on a picnic or something, it next overheats. thing you know it overheats. And yeah, so it's unhappy with itself. And what we were finding is that the, the uh, glue was melting on the hangers that we had for jewelry when it got to be hot. I mean, it could be it's not usually 100 degrees, but it can be 100 degrees at some of the events we attend. And then you add the heat from the sun, and it gets above that, and the glue falls off. So we've replaced all the glue with stuff that's supposed to be good to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And hopefully that will be well within the... <laughs> <laughs> the old stuff you want to we grab need. the adhesive and I'll start spraying the back yeah. side of this fabric? Yeah. Do, 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 do. We don't have to shake it that much. It says it should shake it really well. Shake, shake, shake your fabric. <laughs> your fabric adhesive. Uh -huh. Now I'm going to be applying this adhesive, generally speaking, within the area of this underlying uh, piece yeah, of plywood. probably need to well first of all I need to take off the sawdust that's on there 
and then we need to move it that way a little bit otherwise this side here is not going to get any adhesive on this edge of the uh, we've learned from experience that you have to be a little fussy with some of this stuff so a dust brush will we actually cut this wood in here yesterday well the problem with that is the fact that you have sawdust, sawdust everywhere and uh, even though I vacuumed a couple times and stuff like that, we're still having sawdust that magically shows up in random places. And then the first thing it does is stick to this. Now, if we're going to spray adhesive on top of the sawdust, we're going to get itty bitty teeny tiny spots where it might not glue quite as well. And we don't want that. So I'll be picky. It's worth the pickiness. <laughs> I'm going to apply this adhesive relatively heavily on the back of this fabric. What we discovered several years ago was that the adhesive will soak into the fabric and then it doesn't stick as well. Now, the other side of that is if I make that that heavy, it takes longer to get tacky to, to uh, get ready to use it. Okay, you ready to go ahead and do that edge for me? Here, let me have the adhesive. Let me give it one very light coat over the top of it. As soon as I'm done with this, we'll be draping it over. We'll be draping it over the piece of exercise equipment here. <laughs> now that's ready to go. Want to come do this other edge? Yep. You missed the corner completely. Let me go over it again because the adhesive is soaked into the plywood somewhat. Sounds like we might be running out of no, adhesive. Now loop in front of it. Uh, I you think that's good. You need to clean off the. I think that's it now. Okay, now the trick is... This is not... This is not dry enough yet. No, this isn't either. And you have to wait until they're both... They want them to be tacky, uh, but not so that the stuff comes off on your fingers. So it's kind of a fine line. <laughs> Maybe another 30 seconds on this side over here. You want to check the fabric and see how it's doing? Yeah. It's, it's close enough that if we want to do it, we can. These are contact adhesive, so you have to follow the rules about when you use them. <laughs> All right, you want to grab the other end and let's get it positioned. Same okay. way as we did yesterday? Yep. tricky thing is we have to get it right the first time <laughs> okay how much um, pull until you have enough on your side I think I've got enough I might have too much take out you have to make sure you have enough on your side too I'm fine okay uh, except we're too far on we're too far that way. The nice thing is you do have a little bit of leeway when you first start. Once you start doing this, however, it 
it's not impossible to re do something. You can reset it a little bit, but, but you don't want to do it much. Okay, you need to do the same thing with yours. Now we're going to go ahead and let this set up. We can we'll come back, I'll start up our compressor, and we'll staple the fabric on the back. We're relying on two things to make this fabric stay in place. One is the contact adhesive that we've just put on, and the other is we're securing it with staples on the back to hold it in place. Right. Okay. We'll be back in five minutes. <laughs> One thing I notice is that this uh, stuff is crinkling a little e more easily than usual. I don't know whether it's because of the amount of glue we're putting on or what, but I need to be aware of that. Okay, you're all, all right. set to go. I'm ready. Okay, let's start on the short side on the uh, short sides first. Okay. I'm busy screwing this hinge through the fabric that we just put on and into that tenth inch plywood. As long as we're not real rough with these boards, those screws will hold the hinges just fine. I'm not going to tighten them all down right now. I'm going to make sure I have both hinges fixed more or less in position. What I want to do is I want to make sure that the bottom of this board is flush with the laminate that we just made. And the reason why that's important is because that's how we set the boards up. Now the first time I built these boards, I had to drill all the holes because I was drilling through probably close to quarter inch plywood. And now we're only going through tenth inch, which is 
a lot less than half as thick as that quarter inch plywood. These supports that we've designed for the display boards have a couple of sets of hinges. One that goes from this board here to the plywood base. Well, actually, this is the display surface. Then there's another hinge that hinges this leg right here in the opposite direction so that we can triangulate the base plus the leg against the plywood. That gives us a stable base. It works quite well. We simply put a clamp somewhere along this bottom board to keep everything intact and in place. It works well. How many times have we had a problem, Irene, with uh, display boards? Doing what? <clears throat> Falling over. Oh, since we since we figured out how to clamp them to the table? 